So there's a number of different items that you need in order to build an Arduino. Um, first and foremost, we've got these spark fun button pads. Um, these are kind of the most recognizable part of the Arduino. Um, as you can see, there's like a printed circuit board that you can get. Um, these, these come from sparkfun.com. And um, the, uh, the boards go with these kind of flexible silicon pads. You can get these in a, in a 4x4 or a 2x2 configuration. So I've got the, uh, the 4x4 configuration. And um, I've got four of these, so as you can see, you can lay those out. And uh, the Arduino will be about this big when it's done. And these are nice kind of clicky button pads. They kind of feel like remote control buttons. That's one of the things I said on the, the sport front side, which uh, I think is a good uh, representation. So um, what I'm going to be doing is uh, taking these four circuit boards, and um, there's a bunch of diodes that go onto the, the circuit boards on the back. Um, you can see these, these little uh, sections here that indicate that that's where a diode needs to go. And then um, on the top, the LEDs go into uh, these sections here. So uh, I've got a lot of soldering to do. I've got 64 LEDs and 64 diodes to put together. And then uh, once that's done, um, people have recommended that you can glue these things together if you want to using a glue gun as uh, one of the ways to do that. Or if you get um, certain cases, um, we'll actually hold all the button pads in place so you don't actually have to uh, secure the PCBs together. So um, I ordered a case that I think is going to hold this stuff together, which I got from CuriousInventor.com. It's a black acrylic case. Uh, I'd hope to get one of the machine collective cases, but it seems like Xander's no longer making those, so um, I went ahead and uh, defaulted for another option. But um, those are the, the smartphone button pads and the PCB boards behind them. So besides the, uh, the button pads, one of the other things that's really useful um, that you have to have is uh, something to interface with the Arduino board. Um, and uh, a guy by the name of Unsped has put together a PCB that takes care of this for you. So um, if you go on the Monome forums, a lot of the times people organize what's called a group buy, and they'll take the PCB design that uh, Unsped put together, and they'll, they'll order a big board, um, maybe you know, many of them, so that they can reduce the individual cost. Um, I didn't want to wait for a, uh, a group buy to happen so because uh, I'm incredibly impatient. So I went to a website called batchpcb.com, which I think is run by the same guys as SparkFun. Um, they have the, um, the circuit board design that you just have to pick it and throw it in your shopping cart. Uh, it costs about 30 bucks, including shipping. And um, this is the finished board. Um, as you can see, the, the quality is pretty good. Um, I tested all the traces and all the connections and everything seems to be uh, working perfectly. Obviously, I haven't solved any components on yet. Um, the other thing you'll be able to see, hopefully, in the video is that the um, uh, the information about like where you, you put each of the components is, is pretty clearly marked on the, on the label. So this tells you where the max chip goes and uh, this is where one of the 74 HCs goes. So um, between this and the, the pictures I've been able to find online, uh, I think this is going to be pretty easy to solve it together. Uh, looks like a pretty simple component. Now, uh, talking about the end spit shield again, there's a couple other components you're going to want. Um, uh, you're going to need some uh, sockets for your integrated circuits to plug into. Um, I got the other circuit type, or sorry, the other socket type, which it was uh, like the little circles instead of the uh, uh, these openings like this. And I didn't like them as much because the chips stick out really far. If you get this kind, then uh, the chips plug in nice and tight. So um, I went down to uh, Skycraft Circles in Orlando and picked up a couple of these. So um, in total, you're going to need three. Uh, there's a 24 pin, a uh, 16 pin, and there's also a 14 pin. Um, and those are for all the different ICs uh, that need to go into the circuit. So you can see those just kind of popping like that. So I'll sort of these in place, and then the chips just slot into the top of these. But there's a little notch on the circuit board, and uh, there's a little notch usually on the, uh, the socket as well. So by keeping those in the right direction, you won't confuse yourself later when you're, you're plugging the chips in. So just to show the difference again, uh, originally I bought these um, IC sockets that have the like, little circular openings and the, the pins still plug in fine and generally look okay, but um, I really prefer this style um, where they have kind of a, a deeper socket and the, um, the uh, chip will actually slot all the way and get a, a much kind of more secure fit and the chip doesn't rise up as far, which if you're building a low profile case could be, uh, could be a concern. So a couple of the other things you're going to need are um, headers and ribbon cable. Um, the headers allow the uh, um, the shield to connect to the uh, button pad PCB through a ribbon cable. Um, so you, know, you put these headers on in these different positions. Um, well, I did um, initially. I ordered eight by two headers by accident. You actually need sixteen by two. 
Um, so I actually went down to Spark Fun and just got a giant 50 by 2 and like the breakaway header, so I snapped them into the, the right size with um, 8 on each side here. Um, so, sorry, there's 8 by 2, I ordered 4 by 2s originally, that was my problem. Um, I have a parts list on my blog, by the way, if you're, uh, if you're interested in, in um, ordering the same set of parts that I did, you can, you can get that, and I've corrected the, uh, um, the, the uh, wrong part that I ordered for, for these before. So, um, once those go in place, um, the ribbon cable, I got this from CuriousInventor.com, I have a really good guide on how to build the Arduino. Um, I think this is a 25 color, or a 25 cable ribbon band, so I'm going to cut this down to the right size and pull off the, um, the extra threads I don't need. And then uh, basically just plug the ribbon cable into one of these uh, adapters, which I also got from Curious Inventor. And um, you can see it has these, these very sharp teeth. Um, these teeth will, uh, will bite into the, the cable and make the connection for you. And um, once that's been made, um, in terms of actually plugging the, the two in, uh, these make a really nice tight, uh, kind of secure connection uh, when they plug in. So, as you can see. So, um, and then what I'll do with the other end of the ribbon cable is you, you basically fray it out into the different cables that you need and connect them to the sides of the button pad PCBs uh, that we got from Sparkfun. Which are these guys. A special wiring diagram, and again, Curious Inventor has got a great guide, like a really nice uh, diagram that shows how these things get connected together. And that's gonna link all the button pads to the shield, and then um, the shield connects to the Arduino through, because uh, it's a shield, it basically just sits on top of it. I have seen people um, run wiring as well, depending on the kind of case that you're using. Okay, so another thing that's really important is to get uh, the right kind of LEDs for the board. Um, I've got a, I've got a 68, you only need 64, but I bought a couple extra just in case. Um, I got white, um, I was originally planning on doing a white Arduino with the uh, aluminum and um, satin top that came from uh, the machine collective case. Again, I, I couldn't get that case after all, so I'm gonna have to go with uh, the black and white, um, which uh, I thought would be relatively minimalist and still look cool. Um, the, I looked around online, it seems like um, you wanna make sure that you got a nice uh, um, bright LED because it has to be able to shine through the button pad. So um, these were 2,500 MCD minimum up to 5,000 MCD. I think MCD stands for miller candle. So when you're shopping for LEDs, uh, make sure you get the right brightness. Um, they also have to be of a certain voltage if you check the information on um, the Flipmoo website. They talk about an article uh, that links to the Arduino um, website and uh, it describes how you do the math basically to figure out what kind of resistor you're gonna need so that you can supply the appropriate voltage. Uh, I think these were like 3.2 volts. Um, whatever you, you put in has to be less than five, I think, and I had a hard time originally finding LEDs that were bright enough, but also um, at the right voltage level. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug this into a little uh, uh, test through the lab so I can show you how bright these are through the um, through the button pads. So here's uh, my little test breadboard that I put together. Um, it's basically just uh, power and um, a 1k resistor and uh, a bridge over to the negative there so I can just pop the LEDs in um, because I'm kind of anal about this stuff. I actually tested all my LEDs to make sure that they would uh, they would all work before I sold them to the board because I hate unsoldering. I don't want to get to the point where I'd sold them to the board and they were working. So. Uh, if I pop this in, you can see the LED is pretty bright. It's probably hard to see on the, the video a little bit. But um, I got one of the button pads here, and um, once these are lit, they'll look kind of like this. I'll try to get it where you can see. Um, there's a little bit of a halo coming out of the, the video camera here. Um, but uh, that is a kind of an accurate representation of what they'll look like, as I can see the, uh, the image on the video here. Um, so uh, that was the first test I wanted to do, obviously, make sure these were bright enough. Um, the other thing that's important is the viewing angle. People had said that the uh, you want to get as wide a viewing angle as possible. Um, I guess not so that when this thing's on the desktop, you can still see which lights are lit up. Um, I think my LEDs had a, like a, at least a 30 degree viewing angle. Uh, I think it might have been a little bit wider. I'll, I'll check the specs. But again, if you, if you look at my blog, you can see the, uh, the information on, on what the viewing angle is for the LEDs. So what you're looking for is bright. Um, definitely bright enough to get through the button pads. And then uh, you want to make sure that the viewing angle is wide enough. Uh, that you can see the LEDs. So uh, again, look on the Monome and the Arduino section of the Monome forums. Uh, there's lots of useful information there. So that's pretty much it in terms of interesting components. Um, the only other items I had uh, really to show, I mean, there's a lot of little caps and things like that as well, but um, um, 
these are the diodes. Uh, these came from uh, Spark Fun as well. These are the ones that can go on the, the back of the uh, PCB boards for the button boards. And um, this is the driver chip, the uh, Max 72. What was it? It's the uh, 721 CNG. Um, is the one that you want. I could. I was. I got most of my chips from DigiKey, but they didn't have this one. Um, as it turns out, Spark Fun had it. So. Um, I think it was about 10 bucks, but this will basically, this is the, the brain of the chip um, that controls all the different LEDs, it's like a driver um, chip, so uh, this, is, this is a really crucial component that you're going to need. So um, that's pretty much it, I'm uh, going to go ahead and, and start setting up to get this thing built.